What's going on folks? Earthmaster here jumping in. Good morning. It's Saturday morning, September 12th, 2020, about 7.43 a.m. West Coast time here. And uh, just jumping here on the live stream. Going to do a quick uh, early morning update here. Uh, and then of course we'll do the nightly update later on this evening. Um, didn't get a chance to do an update video last night. Kind of went to bed pretty darn early. Uh, the smoke and everything has been getting to me out here. Uh, with all the wildfires and whatnot here in California, so it's just been really dragging me down, uh, giving me massive headaches pretty much all day long, and uh, I couldn't take any more, so I went to bed pretty early last night. Uh, ooh, I think it was about 6 o'clock in the evening, and uh, yeah, I mean 6 o'clock. It's been a long time since I've gone to bed at 6 o'clock in the morning here, or uh, 6 o'clock in the evening, I should say. Um... And then I woke up uh, briefly, I think at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Fell back to sleep and then woke up wide awake at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, about 4.30. So, been up since. But uh, I figured I'd do an update video here real quick. Since I didn't get one last night, I'm trying to stick to the schedule of doing an update video every day. Uh, but we're going to make up for it uh, on this little morning segment real quick. I mean, there was some activity that... Uh, did occur last night or yesterday i should say now off the coast of japan there uh, pretty good size earthquake there that 6.1 that struck on the east side of the coast of japan right there northern part of japan right along the pacific ring of fire which is the uh, pacific plate here you can see that well-defined ridge the subducting area right in that general location right there and uh right about the same area where that large quake struck back in 2011 but uh, for now, just a little 6.1 magnitude. I shouldn't say little, because it's a pretty good sized quake, no doubt. Uh, that one struck at about 32 kilometers below the surface. Latest quake on the globe here is this 4.8, uh, right smack dab, right around the Indonesia Islands area. The latest in the sequence of quakes in this region. You can see the uptick here, pretty uh, defined all throughout the Indonesia area over here to Fiji and downward. Uh, just pretty active, really active, I would say, uh, when it comes to earthquake activity in this region. Borderline 6.0, 5.9 magnitude striking west of the Fiji Islands area, also on the Pacific Ring of Fire. Um, so it's pretty active. No major quakes out here at the moment, but uh, that can change in the blink of an eye. If you look over here towards the west coast, California quieting down. And, you know, I mention this every time here that uh, we see activity over here on the west. Western part of the Pacific Plate, activity dies down over here. And that's uh, definitely a sign today, including up here in Alaska. Most of this earthquake activity about ready to drop off that 24-hour threshold limit that I have up here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Including a lot of activity up here along the west coast. We have seen the activity in Yellowstone National Park die down as well. Um, but uh, how long that's going to last, it can't really say here. Just a lot of pressure out here along this part of the planet, along this part of the plate right now. And uh, we'll just see how how the, how the, uh, the plates want to move today. Definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, we're going to go over here to a different size map here. And this is the flat scale for all you flat earthers out there. Um, definitely... You know, pretty much the same thing that I showed on the Earthquake th 3D globe there just a second ago. It's uh, pretty active in this region of the world today, right along the Pacific Plate. And um, we'll go ahead and check the West Coast out real quick. There's not a whole lot of any uh, new earthquake activity to talk about. It's relatively dying down for the most part. And in fact, we need to go to the all magnitudes here real quick so we can check that out the activity that is taking place out here uh, looking at your standard earthquakes up here your average earthquake activity in nevada ridgecrest area and also over here by the san jacinto fault system specific area right down here little microquake down here that we may have to watch sometimes these little quakes here trigger swarms on this area uh, the fault system here, the Imperial Fault down here, Brawley Seismic Zone here. It's kind of an extension of the San Andreas Fault, this dark red line that runs up here. Plate boundary there of the North American and Pacific Plate. But for now, just a little 1.2 microquake right at the very end of the Brawley Seismic Zone, this fault system right here. 
and some other small quakes in and around the San Jacinto fault system the Anza section uh, we've been seeing that for quite some time and um, that's looking like it's going to continue today Northern California not a whole lot to report up here folks the geysers still seeing a lot of activity uh, up here around Willits region just some small microquakes here even this area up here has died down tremendously compared to what we've seen uh, over the past week or so a couple I would say about two weeks so as I mentioned activity just dying down out here on the west coast and Yellowstone National Park let's see here see how many see how many they updated here from the USGS we can go seven days all magnitudes and we can get a, a general idea of, of the uh, the quakes that took place out here in Yellowstone National Park there's been a couple um, over the last 24 hours but not as intense as we had seen the day before 114 earthquakes total within that earthquake swarm according to the USGS and that includes microquakes as well there might be a few that they may add after looking at the uh, data further I'm not for sure but uh, we'll see what they put out a um, little bit of migration as I had mentioned in my update video about the Yellowstone earthquake swarm up here to the north you can see that little line of activity there kind of stretching out from the main cluster of quakes there and uh, that's something we watch for uh, during swarms because this can lead to um, some some bigger swarms in the region especially uh, you know kind of seen a little bit up here towards the north but uh, not as in, as intense as uh, this general area here southwest of Yellowstone Lake Yellowstone there in beautiful Yellowstone National Park there Wyoming well let's go here back to the all-day magnitudes there and there's those quakes that occurred within the last 24 hours just you know relatively dying down here there's only about four or five there within that earthquake uh, sequence there and you can also see that specifically on the live data that comes in to the public here the live seismograph stations on these uh, in individual stations here this is pretty much an overview of Yellowstone National Park seismograph stations here and you can see uh, a lot of the activity has died down we were seeing seeing it mostly confined here in this region of the park Lake Yellowstone over here in the blue water pretty quiet um, there was it looks like maybe a little bit of an earthquake right there just a, you can see that back-to-back -back quake right there there's probably the two that hit there on the map uh, another one there another one up here and some other activity from the prior day but looking at the last couple hours or so you can see down here on the bottom relatively quiet but um, I expect that to possibly increase here when we see that pressure back over here along the west coast uh, once it gets doing its thing over there towards the uh, Indonesia Islands area um, so yeah there's also a tropical disturbance tropical uh, well let's see here I guess I can show you guys real quick here tropical depression 19 over there uh, that's going to be developing possibly into a hurricane kind of keeping an eye on it there is some uh, tropical storm watches up over here for parts of Florida uh, let's go over here and show you guys specifically uh, let's get rid of that there we go over here along the um, parts of the Florida coast here you can see that uh, yellow tropical storm watch it's possible that this storm could strengthen into a good sized hurricane it's running relatively slow in the general direction towards the uh, the Gulf Coast states here you can see it over here towards uh, kind of taking aim at the Louisiana area once again there of course Hurricane Laura last month was uh, pretty quick right it, it did kind of get up and moving there towards the end but it developed pretty rapidly and turn into a pretty major hurricane right there so it's possible they're not really predicting it uh, as far as the hurricane center goes uh, as far as it turning into a major hurricane but um, they didn't really you know these guys are I don't know they're I don't want to say anything bad but they're kind of they almost wait until it happens and then they put out oh it's gonna be a major hurricane you know it's it's a uh, these things are kind of hard to uh, hard to uh, forecast, I guess, if you will. You know, being a weather person, I don't know if I'd want that job or not. A lot of people hate you because you're you're always wrong for the most part. It seems like even if it's by uh, you know a couple days, but 
you know, these guys try, and that's what they're there for, is to um, watch computer models and whatnot, and they're not predicting any type of uh, hurricane status, at least close to hurricane status here. But warm water, um, not a whole lot of shear out there to destroy this thing or, or to shred it, but, you know, it's got, it's got some warm water to work with, and a couple days ahead to gain strength, and the GFS system here, from Tropical Tidbits, the uh, GFS model, got to go down here to take a look at it, does show it turning into a uh, potentially Category 1 or 2 hurricane here. Got to put this into motion here a little bit, and you can see the tightening right there of the hurricane. Pressure pretty low there at 987. Um, we'll just have to see exactly how this uh, works out. I mean, I think it may hit Category 1 or 2 status at least. It's got some majorly warm water to work with and not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of issues to run into. It looks like as soon as it hits the land there it does get caught up, moved off to the northeast. But uh, it's something to keep an eye on folks right there. Another big one off the coast luckily. That one there is uh, well off the, the east coast over here. That's a pretty big one there. So I'm just kind of watching it out here along the west coast. We could see potentially, according to the GFS, maybe some rain up here into Oregon and, and to uh, northern California. It looks like this would be very beneficial for the fires up here in the Pacific Northwest and possibly maybe clear the smoke out of my area here in northern California. I don't think we're going to get any rain here, even though G GFS has shown potentially some shower activity in the northern California, but that's pretty much like Mount Shasta looks like northward and along the coast but definitely good for Oregon Oregon's up there too burning up and uh, it's just not a good year for um, for fire season here I don't like using that word fire season because it's it's been common it's been used all too much here lately and I don't like that one bit so keep an eye on the tropics here I will be not be out there chasing this one I just I I don't even know if I like chasing hurricanes or not. I mean, I'm more of a thunderstorm type guy. Tornado, lightning, hail, you know, high winds. Hurricanes are just, to me, they're kind of like a low pressure system here along the west coast, uh, but warm. You know, just warm water with, with with much higher wind. But it just kind of reminds me of uh, just a low pressure system that we get quite often in the winter time here along the north coast. They get pretty strong as far as the middle bands or the uh, the pressure goes. So I'll, I'll pass on these hurricanes for now. I might get I might get a an urge to go chase them a little bit later. Who knows? We'll see what happens. We're kind of in the peak area right now of hurricane season, as you can tell. Um, so watching the tropics pretty closely. Uh, check the trimmer map here real quick. I tend to check this towards the end. This is from yesterday's. What do we got here? Something went wrong. Please try again. Nine eleven, right? How come they're not letting me? Hmm, interesting. For some reason can't get data from yesterday. I'm not oops, I'm not for sure what's going on with yesterday's uh activity, but that's okay. I'll come back and check that a little bit later, I suppose. So Alright folks. Have a good day. Have a good weekend out there. I will be doing an update video a little bit later on this evening unless something major does happen. Uh, but we'll cover a little bit more activity a little bit later on this evening. And uh, like I say, my throat's just hurting again. I'm starting to get a headache because it's outside, just outside for a few minutes. And uh, man, it's just absolutely killer out here. Not good. We'll talk to you guys a little bit later on. Have a good, safe weekend, folks. Peace.